lower back pain and has seen 16 physical therapists in four years, in addition to weekly massages and chiropractic visits. The pain is not relieved by rest or change of activity. She has unbearable left flank pain, reports pain, limits her ability to complete marathons, and worsens with side-to-side -side motion of tennis. She climbs back up on herself with forward bending, much like a Gower sign, okay, because of the sharp shooting pain. She reports a 36-pound weight gain despite strict dieting and exercise. The patient reports sleeping up to 14 hours a day or more. She suffers from extreme food allergies, gluten, soy, dairy, flax, blueberries, lamb, I mean extreme food allergies. Reports that trigger point therapy provided by PM and I provides relief for only a few days at best. She has heavy cycles but doesn't think much of it because she's always had cramping since menstruation began. And her pain limits her ability to participate in social activities and work-related activities. So I'm going to fill in the blanks here. All of the surgical photos, not the prolapse one, but all of the surgical photos that you've seen in this endometriosis portion have been my surgical photos. I am a stage four endometriosis survivor. I sat just where you sat with this disease growing in my body. Okay. It has taken my career, it has taken my social life from me, it has taken financial effects on me, it has taken emotional effects on me, and it has changed my life forever. And had this lecture been presented when I was a student here, my whole life would have been different. Because unfortunately, I'm one of the ones who went for the big surgery, the deep excision surgery, and did not get enough relief. Changes, yes, my life is very, very different than it was just a year ago. Before I had surgery, I was sleeping up to 14 hours a day. People say I went to work in peds because I love children. I didn't go to work in peds because I love children, although I do. I went because it's a six hour day and I could get into bed earlier. I wouldn't have to work a 10 hour day like many of you have to work in the hospitals, okay? I sat here as a student I always sat in the back row because I needed to stand oftentimes during the lectures, okay? Just sitting bothered me because I had such intense pain at S2 and S3, okay? I always sought help from physicians. As we can see, I sought plenty of help from physical therapists. I was once called into my advisor's office here. I'm not going to tell you who I did. <laughs> and she reprimanded me for standing during lecture, okay? And I said, you know, the back pain is getting really bad. And her answer to me was, people go to a PT for pain relief, not to see someone in pain. And I said, I just don't know what to do. It's like I have three really good weeks and one week that's awful. I never connected that the awful week was my period. Okay? Those were the easy days when the pain wasn't constant. By the time I had surgery, I had no relief from pain, okay? When I was a student here, I carried lab clothes all the time, right? I schlepped my stuff around all the time. Why was that? Because if my period started when I was here as a student, I would clot so large, I would barely make it to the bathroom and I would need to change my clothes, okay? I did not know. I told physicians for years. I told PTs for years. They did not know either, okay? And I will say that once, I was an excellent student here, but once I turned in a late paper. And it was a paper in um, Jerry's neurology class. And I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to say. You can't exactly say, I had my period, I couldn't turn in my paper, right? That's odd. That's a social stigma, okay? You know, every woman gets their period. They don't turn in late papers. It was Passover. So I told him that I was, and I'm Jewish, okay, at least I'm Jewish. <laughs> so I told him that I was busy with the Passover Seder, and I wasn't able to turn in my paper, okay? This has affected every minute of my life. Within months of graduation, I was missing job interviews, okay? It has affected me socially because I spent so much of my younger time becoming educated. I have a dual master's degree as well as the DPT, 
I never met anyone because I was so focused on my studies. When I got out of school, I was getting sicker and sicker. And it's very hard to date when your priority is staying awake and managing hip trigger points. I used to stand when I worked in the hospital in the ambulance phase while one of the doctors did the injections for the trigger points. And we used to do it once, once a week, once every two weeks. You know, my life's decisions because of this disease for the most part have been made for me. Um, there is a huge financial impact of this disease. Many times you're paying for your physical therapy out of pocket. Many times you're paying for, obviously you're paying for your massages if you need to manage pain out of pocket. My surgeon does not take insurance, and yet I won't go anywhere else because I can't handle being told there's nothing wrong with me again. Okay, my surgeon believes me. My surgery was $44,000. It's an out-of-pocket expense. Okay, my friends, all my PT school friends, they have booked a cruise for the summer. I won't be going with them because I fear another surgery. I fear that I'll need that money to go through surgery again. Everything that you guys go through on a daily basis, it is not easy to be a PT, right? They put us through a lot in PT school. Every time, at least once a week a month, I wake up and I think, is this the last month I can lift a patient? Can I really continue to put my body through this? I went through all these hoops to do something that I love, and now I'm not sure if I'll be able to continue to do that. I suffered in silence for nearly 15 years, and actually looking back, it was probably closer to 23. Before I got help, I saw 16 gynecologists. I saw seven in a four month period, okay? This is a very difficult di diagnosis to make, okay? It's it's a difficult diagnosis to make because we don't always speak up and say what has gone on in our lives, but also because people are so eager to say, did you try the pill? The pill does not help this pain. It does not change it once it's in a stage four like this. Okay, My PTs, and one of them, he's your TA, that I saw towards the end were like, Sally, something is wrong. Pain is not like this. Unrelent unrelenting, unremitting night pain, constant, regardless of cycle. Just a little bit worse when I had my cycle. The last six years before my surgery, those are the six years after I graduated, nearly swallowed me whole, okay? I begged, I begged help from physicians, from chiropractors, from PTs, I begged them all. My parents don't retire because they're afraid they'll have to support me, okay? You know, and I have a doctorate. Just one mention of this disease, or simply someone noticing a red flag anywhere along the line, just like you've been trained to do today, would have changed my life forever. I would have been able to have intervention before it was too late. This is why I speak up. It's not easy. You know, I just showed you all the insides of my body. It's not so easy. My life since surgery is tremendously different. I don't nap every day. I'm able to play tennis, although I still have severe pain and need a painkiller afterwards. Um, but I have hang-ups. I have problems. I fainted in a Trader Joe's from cramping the other week. You know, unfortunately, liver, kidney, uterus, these are all common sites of endometriosis. Okay? And I still suffer, but I'm no longer silent. Because to suffer in silence robs you of the opportunity to change people's lives. And I hope that you take this disease very seriously. Thank you. Are there any, um, I have uh, my own personal information. You can Facebook me, which I've said like 20 times. <laughs> and um, you can email me. For more on endometriosis, I encourage you to go to the Endometriosis Foundation of America website. That's that endofound. Org. Um, that's an organization started by um, one of the excision surgeons, Dr. Seshkin, and Padma Lakshmi, who is a very public figure with endometriosis. Um, and I also give you, for some more technical background, the Dr. Seshkin website. Um, he'll explain the types of surgery that um, are available and what women go through on a, a daily basis. I believe there are more 
photos on his website as well. Um, if you do find me through Facebook, I can give you um, more sites as well that have um, different doctors and different surgeons' opinions on this disease. And if you have any questions on the other stuff, I'll do my best to help you out.